and thank you everyone for joining us for our first virtual paint night benefiting a brighter community. My name is Molly Walker and I am the board president for ABC. We're really excited to have friends and family from across the country join us and learn about ABC. A Brighter Community is Tampa's longest running nonprofit preschool, providing full support for students in the Tampa Heights area. If you've had the chance to visit the school, pre-COVID of course, you'll know just how special it is. Tonight we plan to give you a short glimpse into what makes ABC different. Before we get started, I'd like to take this time to do some recognition. Teaching during COVID-19 is no small feat and our teachers have been rock stars. They've taken on e-learning and finding ways to engage our students and parents seamlessly. Thank you for your commitment to the school and our children. I'd also like to recognize All Saints Lutheran Church. Their service to our school never ceases to amaze me. They provide weekly brown bag lunches, they come do yoga with the kids, and they also have created a book corner in the school just for our children. Last but not least, I wanna make a special shout out to our sponsors, PNC Bank, Bank of Tampa, and Medallion Corporation. Thank you for your continued commitment to our students. Here's a short message from our Louvre sponsor, PNC. Hi everybody, thank you for joining us for our first ever virtual event to benefit a brighter community. My name is Allie Heinrichs and I am an Assistant Vice President at PNC Bank. I'm honored to serve on the Board of Directors of a Brighter Community, Hillsborough County's oldest nonprofit preschool. Early childhood education is an important stage in every child's life and PNC is proud to support a Brighter Community's efforts in providing quality education and family support to those in our community. Have fun tonight and thank you for helping us make an impact. We'd also like to give a big thank you to Beverly at Pino's Palette, Brandon. Beverly, without you, none of this would have been possible. To our guests, please visit Pino's Palette, Brandon, located right in the heart of Brandon. We thank you, Beverly, and we can't wait to do this again soon. All right, last thing before we get started, you'll notice a silent auction link in the description box below. Please take some time to check it out and and browse the items that we have up for auction. All benefits from the silent auction will benefit the school. And with that, let's get started and happy painting. Hello everybody and welcome to Pino's Palette. We are coming at you live today from South Hill, Washington. My name is Jess and I'm gonna be taking you on this journey through this endless summer painting. All right, I'm so happy to have you guys. Just settle in, you're gonna listen to me get gabber on a little bit for a few minutes here. Settle in, get your stuff. We're gonna go over our supplies, everything that we need to make this happen, okay? This is the endless summer and if it's anything like our endless uh, isolation, well, let's just hope it's not, okay? Let's just start right there. It's not gonna be. It's gonna be amazing. We're gonna have fun. It'll be awesome. Like I said, my name is Jess. I'm gonna be your guide and your host. I am an artist. I am a sculptor at heart. That is my favorite thing. I love to create like huge, larger than life, uh, strange, weird things, uh, if that helps you at all. Uh, I do have like an eight foot long octopus crashing through the wall of my home. He's got goo dripping off of him. I have life-size flying monkey like up in the corner of my loft. I have a life-size clown when you walk in and itty bitty little monkeys and clowns and babies all over and Dr. Seuss taxidermy creatures all over the walls. So I have eyes everywhere in my house. It's kind of like a little freak show and I love it. So welcome friends. This is who you have today. I hope you have a drink in hand. You're gonna need it. I'm gonna kind of show you around just a little bit so we can, you know, we can do this and make it fun and make it right. Let's take a look at your setup. I'm hoping you have some kind of uh, plastic sheeting, something down to cover your beautiful furniture. I don't want paint getting all over the place, so make sure you have, I don't know, paper towels, newspapers. Um, do people still have newspapers? I don't know. Uh, cardboard, things like that, plastic wrap, something to cover your furniture, first things first. If you have an easel, fantastic. If not, it's fine. Take your canvas, lay it right down on the table. That's how a lot of us paint at home as well. You'll be good to go. Now listen, for this painting, I have three brushes I'm going to be using, but I can get away with two. So if you don't have all three, don't worry, okay? You will need some kind of a large brush like this. Uh, this is about a half inch, I believe. Uh, just something like this. This is going to be for our background. This is going to be doing all this blending, all the sky, all the water. It'll even do our land down here, okay? 
We're going to do almost everything with this brush. The next two brushes, I don't care if you have both, as long as you have something smaller. Um, this one is a small flat brush. This will be really nice to have. And this flat brush gets really skinny when you press it together, and it'll give you some really skinny lines. So we might, you could use this for everything. I like to. This is going to be, look at perfect size right there. That's going to be a palm tree. That's going to be a palm tree. That's going to be our moon. And that's going to be all our palm fronds. I do also have a little bitty one. Um, this will be up to you. I'm going to leave it to you. This will be for like the little itty bitty pieces down here. That's up to you. Whatever one you're more comfortable with. This is not like a liner script brush. That's too skinny. This one has a little bit more meat on its bones. It comes to a nice little point. So if you're heavy handed, this is a really nice alternative. So you can get some really skinny little palm fronds. All right. Paper towels. Yes, you need them. Old rags, something like that. I know these are kind of a hot commodity right now, but you will need something to dab your brushes off, wipe your hands off, that kind of thing. All right. Also, you need a water cup. Mine's about halfway full. That's where these brushes are going to live the whole time. We are using acrylic paint and it dries super fast. So I want to avoid your brushes getting crusty. That's for Laurel. Um, keep your brushes in there. That way, you know, just keep some clean, keep some nice for you. All right, you ready? Paints. Now listen, some of you are using your own paints at home. That's rad. Some of you got a kit from your local studio. So we're going to kind of go through what we should have. Um, if you're missing any colors, type in, let us know, and we'll kind of make some accommodations and, and help you out. But we've got so many pretty colors on here. It can really, it doesn't have to look exactly like this. And I want you to keep that in mind. That's kind of the beauty of this. If you don't have any green, let's use blue. Let's use pink. Let's, you know what I mean? There's no rules here. So no worries. But I hope you have white. That's a little important. I can't mix that for you. So I hope you have some white. We do need some black for our palm trees. I have a nice dark blue. I have a hot pink. I've got, ooh, it's spilling. I've got some bright yellow. And I've got this really pretty dark green. It's right down here. And I've got some purple, some bright, like hot purple. Okay. We got a few little pieces of purple. The purple's not mm, super important, but there's like two stripes of purple. That's it. That's all the purple we use. So if you're missing any of that, missing purple, not the end of the world. Okay. We don't need it. I have also a separate plate, a mixing plate, nothing on it. I will be using this to mix some colors before I put them on. Um, it's also good for drawing if you need it. So make sure you have something like this, a paper plate to mix into as well. I'm going to put mine together because I don't have much space up here. All right. I think we're ready. I think we can get going, you guys. Before we do, I want to thank you from the bottom of our hearts, from Pino's Palette. Thank you so much for being our customer. Thank you so much for continuing to choose us and giving our small business a fighting chance in these crazy times. I would love for you all, each right now, stop what you're doing and raise your glass. Raise your glass. Let's have a toast. Here is to you, our cherished customers. We love you. We can't wait to get you back in the studio. All right. Here's to your masterpiece we're about to create in this endless summer. Hopefully we do get an end to our quarantine, but here's to this right now. Here's to you. Cheers. Mm-hmm. All right. Ready? Ready? Listen, this painting, we're going to be blending. Blending and smooshing this paint and blending and blending. And just all that is is just painting, painting, back and forth, back and forth. Acrylic paint dries fast. Once your paint dries, that's it. There is no blending to be had, okay? So we kind of want to mm, get through this a little quick, only because I want your paint as I apply it. I want it to still be wet. So when you put the next color on, they blend, and it's a beautiful sunset. If at any point, if it dries, well, we'll just add more of that old color back in, wetting it back up. Wetting it back up, is that a thing? Wetting it? I think so. We'll find out, right? All right. Ready? Our very first step is very demanding. Um, it's very technical, it's very difficult, and you were not going to like me after, I'm <laughs> kidding. We're going to paint this white canvas, uh, white, so, but not the whole thing. Right here in the middle, okay? Our horizon line is pretty much, I want you to eyeball this and find the middle of your canvas, right here. The middle of your canvas, that's about the middle of mine. That's going to be where our sun is, where our sun is setting. So, 
right in the middle of your canvas, I want you to take your big brush. We're going to use this big brush this whole time right now. Dip into white paint, please. Nothing but white. And right in the middle of my horizon line, I'm going to paint white. Now, I know this is a ridiculous step. I am quite aware. But it's a very important step because this is going to prep our canvas for the next color coming in. So when I add this hot pink on here, it's going to be like streaky, beautiful goodness, OK? So right here in the middle, I want you to come up about four fingers. Straight up white paint, nothing else. Let's not spend a lot of time on this because it's white on white. No big deal. But back and forth, nice, easy strokes. Your brush should be a little damp. About four fingers up. And you can even drag it down a little bit. Just smush on a block, a band of white paint about the size of your hand, right smack in the middle, OK? So I found my middle horizon line right here, and I just painted up upwards with four fingers worth of white paint. Seems like a silly step, I know, I know. But our next step, you'll understand why. All right, good. A hand's width of white, good. Let's kill it, let's move on, no big deal. Now, we're gonna go in and add our horizon line, and I believe it is pink. My brush is dirty. Okay, I'm not going to clean it off. I want that white in there. Hot pink, hot pink, everybody. Dip straight into your hot pink. Go back to our original horizon line, like back in the middle of that white. And I want you just to streak in straight across. Look at that one easy stroke. And I'm going upwards. I'm going up. Now, you will notice as you put this pink on, it's really light. That's what we want. We want, And I want it streaky. Don't make it like perfect and blended. I want to see streaks of white, streaks of pink. I want this to look, you know, some really hot spots of pink. It'll be really soft and really pretty. But that line right there, right in the middle of your canvas, that's our horizon line. That's where our sun is going to be setting, OK? So right now, we're going to go up about four fingers worth of pink paint. Look at this, about four fingers up. So you should have this really soft, light, bubblegum pink kind of color. We're going about four fingers up. We will be adding a little bit of orange in there and some blues and some greens. But before we do, I want to just put like three little dashes of pink, which are going to end up being these clouds right here. So watch what I'm going to do. Right here on my pink, I'm just going to bring up one little side like right here. And I'm letting this be maybe about a hand's width wide. Look at how scratchy and streaky it is, OK? No big deal. I want it to look like that. I want it to be really messy. I don't want it to be like one, like a chimney, like one little square chimney. And let's add one more over here. And maybe one here. Your placement of these don't really matter because we're going to add in some dark green, some dark blue, and then we're going to add this minty color and we're going to go around these and they're going to look like clouds. All right, so just throw this on right now. There's no rhyme or reason. There's no good spot or bad spot. Just throw it on. You're good. And that's going to be straight up pink. No, we did not put white underneath these first. That's fine. We did not need white underneath those. I only wanted white down here, so we have that soft, pretty, pretty section. All right, I'm going to give you just a minute. These up here are just about as wide as the brush. That's it. So like half an inch. And I kind of piled on a lot of paint. It's kind of thick. Those will get kind of covered up when we add that minty green color in. They'll just get a little mm, mushed in there. But you'll have these like little pops of that pink. And that's all we're looking for at this point. So we're going to mix up. 
a little bit of a color and we're going to add in like this peachy sherbety color and we're going to put it into our sky and then we're going to come down to our water for a minute we're kind of going to bounce around you ready do not clean off your brush leave it as is it's fine being dirty it's got pink paint on it and that's how i want it okay I want it just like that because we are actually going to be mixing pink. We're going to be grabbing more pink. So do not clean off your brush. We're going to mix. So please grab your mixing plate. Grab your big brush. Leave it dirty. And I want you to grab one scoop of pink. And when I say that, I mean literally like scoop this up like a shovel. Just a glob, a little glob. I don't need a lot. Just a little glob of it and stick it on your mixing plate. Just like that. Hot pink on your plate, one scoop of it. And now you're going to mix a scoop of yellow as well. Brush is dirty. I'm going straight into the yellow. Just like that. Put it right on your plate and mix them. And it's going to make like this fiery, like sherbet, really pretty color. Okay. It's bright. It's really pretty. So I'm going to take a little bit of it. I just kind of dabbed a little bit off on the edge here because I just I don't need that much on my brush. I just don't. I can always go back and get more. But that's going to go right above, right on top of my pink, right in between here. And I'm going to kind of drag it down into my pink as well. So just right in here. And notice how I'm just barely coming up to my little cloud over here and just letting it drag in a little bit very gentle. I'm just kind of feathering it in there. And we'll go up with this pink. Mm, let's see. We've got our pink right here and we're going to do a little bit of orange. So maybe another three fingers or so with our orange. Okay. A little bit of this orange. I'm going to come up about three fingers or so. And I'm really, I'm painting right over right over that pink cloud right there. It's okay. I'm going to go right over it. Now, you're going to put it right on top of that pink, and now I'm taking it, and look, I'm going, dragging it down into the pink as well. That's just going to help it blend a little bit. So go ahead and take whatever color you got going on right there and just drag it down and really let those two colors just really blend and be really pretty. We don't want to go up too high. I do want to leave about a hand's width up here because we're going to do green. We're going to do dark blue. And then we're going to do this like all light blue. So if you have more space than I do, that's fine. If you have less, it's fine. They're all going to be a little different. It's okay. And keep in mind too, if you're like, no, nah, I hate that orange. I'm not putting that on there. Skip it. Don't do it. This is your endless summer, okay? I want you to make it just how you want it. I'm going to cover on this side as well, doing the same thing. And notice how I'm just going back and forth, back and forth. I'm really just smushing those two colors, the pink and the orange, together. And it's making this really beautiful sunset -y. And look at, I don't know, right here it's super pink. And I look like I just have, you know, orange on either side. I'm going to take this all the way across. Look, I just went, there I go, all the way across, just to really soften that area. So right where your two colors meet, if you have a really sharp line of pink and then you've got an orange stripe right on top of it, we don't want that. We want it to all be blendy, blendy, beautiful. So right where those two colors meet, right in between, I want you to take your brush with nothing on it, just whatever leftover paint, and you're just going to go back and forth right in between where those two colors meet. And then I like to drag it down and then drag it back up, okay? If at any time you're feeling like this paint is just getting really dry and it's not moving and it's not like looking good, a little bit of water, just take a little bit of water, barely, a little bit, just on the tip of your brush, just a little bit of water, you don't need a ton. I don't want this like dripping down your canvas, so just barely on the tippity tips of the brush. And we're just going to let all these colors blend. So again, we had a little bit of this whited down, this lighter pink, about three or four fingers. And then we're coming up here with about three more fingers of this orange color that we created. 
but I'm letting them blend so you don't really see where one ends and one starts. It just kind of fades into the next one, okay? We're going to leave that alone for just a minute. We're going to let these kind of pretty little colors dry because we're going to move down into our water. Give you just a minute to let those blend a little bit. And like I said, we kind of want to move a little quick only because I want the paint to stay wet so it'll blend. That is important. Okay. Take a look at our water. We're going to stay here in our water for a little bit and we're going to finish it and we're going to go all the way down and then we'll head back up to our sky. And by then that'll all be dry. Okay. For now, we're going to come right down here where our horizon line is. And we're going to add in this hot pink, right? Just like we did before. We're going to add in a little bit of our sherbet color that we just mixed. And then we're going to do white. And then we're going to totally change it up and go straight into green. And we're going to work our green up into the white right there. We got to be careful with this though, okay? I don't want this green and orange mixing because then we got like some poo poo color going on and that's not the beach we want to be on, okay? That's like, that's not where we're going. That's the wrong beach. So we're going to start at the horizon line. Go ahead and clean off your brush just because it might have a lot of, I don't know, stuff on it. I want it clean. Clean, please. Clean off that brush for me. Ready? It's water time. Hot pink, baby. Hot pink paint. Nothing else. Straight up hot pink. And I'm coming in here with some hot pink. It will be a little bit darker than our sky. I think I made my horizon line a little bit higher, so I'm going to have a lot more water. But that's okay. They're all going to be a little different. But I think mine's up like one brush stroke too high. But that's okay. So right across here, hot pink. This is going to be our line. And there's not really anything that cuts that line. So we really want it to be just kind of nice and clean and crisp. Okay? So if you're like me and you haven't had quite enough to drink and you got the shakes, you're going to have to take a deep breath, okay, and just <sighs> muscle through it. Let's make it kind of, somewhat, and if you need to go little by little, sometimes that helps us to get a nice straight line as well. I would put a lot of paint on this brush, glob it on there, it makes it really easy to get a little bit straighter line. We're going to come down with this maybe about two or three fingers. That's it. Like I said, if you have a much smaller area than I do, because I think I have too much of an area. Look at how much water I have. That's way too much. It's okay. But if yours is a little bit smaller, then you'll just use a little bit less. You won't go as far. So I'm going to do about three fingers wide. If yours is a little bit smaller than mine, maybe just go two fingers. Okay? We got a little Guns N' Roses, a little Paradise City bumping in the background. You guys can't hear it, but it's just what we need. Paradise City, this is where we're going, right? Here we go. Three fingers wide. Nice and easy brush strokes. Look at me. I'm going from one side to the next. I am not stopping in the middle. Do not pass go. Do not collect $200. Just go all the way across. That's going to give you that super, like, just, I don't know, calm, smooth seas. You could have this, like, crazy. I don't know. It could be like a storm brewing in your beach. That's okay, too. But we're just going to go nice and easy. Notice the bottom line's super messy. Nobody cares. It's fine. Three fingers. Hot pink. Nothing else. Big brush. Now, orange. That same orange that we mixed, if you need a little more, it was one scoop of yellow and one scoop of pink. But this should be enough. I Well, I got barely enough. It'll work. We can make some more. If you need to mix it again, that same orangey color that we made up in our s the sky is now reflecting down into the water. Okay? So it was one scoop of pink, one scoop of yellow. We're going to take that orange. Ready? I did not clean off my brush. Nope. I went straight into that orange because we're going to be 
blending it with that pink anyways. And I'm going, look at, almost right on top of my pink line. I'm not going right below it. I'm pretty much going mm, just a little bit on top of my pink line. So those colors are going to blend and mix. So I'm going right on top of my pink line. And then just keep going. Back and forth. Back and forth. Use plenty. Use plenty of paint. Now look, I've made that like maybe two, oh, I got skinny little rat fingers, but just two little skinny little rat fingers. One big thumb maybe of this orange. And as I'm going back and forth, I want you to slowly go back and forth, but slowly start moving your way up the canvas, up into that pink. So you're just gonna go like this, and then you're gonna move up, and then you're gonna move down. And that's gonna blend those two colors seamlessly. I don't want too much of this orange. Unless you do, unless you're like, no, I want that, I love it. Mine are like, again, two skinny little rat fingers of orange. Now we're gonna lighten it up because here's what I want to happen. Right here, we've got the pink, we got a little bit of orange, but uh, we're gonna just soften it up with white now because this little section right here, this little area, I want to be mostly white, like white paint. So we're going to just kind of get rid of this orange that we have, lighten it, lighten it as we go down. So it's mostly white. So when we bring our green into it, the green will then be up here mixing with white paint. All right? So this is our goal. I want that green to be mixing with white paint, not orange. Again, the poo-poo beach, and we don't want to be there. All right? So my brush is like out of paint, out of my orange paint, but it's still dirty. There's still orange paint on there. I mean, there's still paint on here. So that's okay. There's still some paint. I'm going to go, I don't know why I did that. Make it a mess. I'm going to go straight into white paint. Look at my brush, barely dirty. If your brush is filled with paint and it's just globbing with that orange paint, uh, clean it off. Let's, let's clean it off. But mine, like I showed you, it has like this. That's all it has left. Now I'm going to go straight into white paint. Nothing else. And just like we did the pink, kind of on top of the orange, we're going to come straight across with white paint. And we're going to mix it. And we're going to blend it. We're going to do the same thing. I'm kind of moving that orange, that white up into the orange as well. So I'm moving it up into the orange, and now I'm dragging that orange just a little bit down. But like I said, I want to have that orange, and then it's just going to get lighter, lighter, lighter white because I want the green to mix with white. I'm going to go in again. It's going to be really bright. And you can go down. Look, I'm about here. i got about a hand's width left. And I think that'll be nice because I want that little naked space right here. I want about three, two or three fingers worth of just kind of that l really soft, orangey, just about white. I want that, about three fingers worth of that color, that beautiful, like, nothingness, okay? I keep going down here, and if you push really hard, you're going to get some paint that still comes out. But it's okay as long as it's soft. Add that white in. Work your way up into the orange, and then work your way back down into the white. So I don't want it to look orange-white. You know, I want to get rid of that. I want to blend it a little bit. Soften it. If you're just getting way too much color, and you're like, yeah, it's not working. It's just orange, orange, orange. Clean off your brush. Clean off. Get rid of all that paint then. So that way you can add in some white. All right, here, here's what I have. I have about two fingers width of just white paint. It's a little orangey. I mean, there's a little bit, a little touch of it in there. Not much. So I've got about two fingers of pink, two fingers of that orange, and then it just blends down into like two fingers worth of white, and that's it. And if you want to go down even farther with your white, you can, because we're going to hit this up with straight up green. 
And that white in there really makes it like this beautiful minty color. So you might want more white than less. I think I will. I'm going to add a little bit more. I'm going to clean my brush first, though. Let me clean my brush off. <laughs> Got my orange. I put my white in, remember, and I blend, and I'm blending up, and I'm blending down. And so now I've got these, what, two fingers worth of, like, empty white space. I'm going to add one more finger worth, just because I can. One more stripe of white. Now I have three. And then my green's going to be, like, beautiful, minty, beautiful. Because remember, I want this to be white. I don't want to mix that green with the orange. That's my only goal right now. Okay. How are we doing? Are we doing okay? Love this. Love it. Okay, take a look. Here's where we are. Oh, look at how high my horizon line is. See? It's okay. Eh. I'm going to have more water. We're going to start adding in that green and blending it upwards. Are you ready? I have about four fingers worth of nothingness. Empty, no white, no orange, no nothing. Just canvas. Clean off your big brush. Clean it off. Clean off your big brush. And you should have a dark green. We've got a phthalo green, so a nice dark green. And we're going to take dark green. Start at the bottom. Work our way up. Okay? Into the little bit of white. Dark green. Start at the bottom. Straight up dark green. We're not mixing anything. Very simple. Your brush was clean. We got all that orange and white off. You are doing long horizontal strokes all the way across. And I want you to move quickly so you get this green up into the white before the white dries. So if you're not there yet and you're like, wait, I'm still putting my white on, you're fine. Keep going. But when you're done, you know to move right into your green. I'm not even hitting my white yet. There I go. There I go. Look at that. I just hit that white section. Look how pretty. I don't want you to go up too far. Again, stay away from that orange. Hopefully you had about three or four fingers worth of white. And you're going to blend up into that and just gently let it taper off as you get closer to that orange. You do not want to mix those two colors. And I'm gently, uh, look how slow. I'm going up and I'm just letting, I'm barely touching. I'm barely touching now because I'm getting closer to my orange and I just let it fade up into nothingness. So it's really dark at the bottom. And as you move up, you're going to hit that white. You're going to come up into that white. And you're just going to slowly keep mixing and blending. If it is too dark and you're like, oh, it's, I don't like it, it's too dark, put some white on your brush and add some white into it. Easy. Okay, so if you need to, you can grab a little bit of white and just add it right into your painting. Don't be afraid. Don't be scared. But that's about as close as I'm going to get. Like, I'm still like a finger or so away of getting into that dark orange. Don't do it, man. Don't do it. And if you're going and you're like, there's so much paint and it's so dark, clean off your brush. Less is more. You can always go in little by little by little, okay? It's very hard to take it away. So nice and dark on the bottom. Nice, long, even strokes. And you're going to move right up into that white. If your white has already dried, please add more white on your brush and use it from the top down. Nice and easy. As you're going, as you're painting, if you want to, you can do something called color wrapping and wrap these colors around the edges. Me, personally, I like at the very end when my painting's all done, I like to go in and just paint the edges a nice like dark blue or a black. It really just makes it look 
professional and just really pretty. Makes it look finished. But if you want to color wrap, you can just, whatever color you're working with, you can just add it as you go around the edges. Blendy, blendy, blendy. Slowly, gently into that white section. Slow and gentle. And that's where we're going to leave it. We're going to leave it right there. Do not clean off your brush. Leave it right here because we're going to go into green next. Nice and easy. So our water is complete. We're going to come back up here. Work into the sky. Let me show you what's going to happen. I just cleaned off my brush. I didn't mean to do that. See, I got distracted by the coconuts. Oh, well, it's fine. If you cleaned off your brush, it's OK. If you did not and you still have green on your brush, you stay right there. You're good. Because here's what's coming up right here. Look at this. This little corner is maybe like three fingers straight up green. So that's what we're going to do now. A little bit of just, and it's, look at it's coming at a diagonal. So this guy's going like this, nice and horizontal. And for some reason over here, the wind is blowing and it's coming this way, diagonal, diagonal. And then here it kind of tapers off and it flattens back out. So we're going this way and then it starts getting kind of diagonal. I don't know why. So this top section, we're going to do about two or three fingers worth of dark green. And then we're going to put some dark blue in right here. Again, mixing and blending, mixing and blending. And then we will mix a light minty color and we'll fill the rest of this in and kind of come around here. OK, that's what we're going to do next. Our sky, our water should be perfect. Do not clean off your brush. Stay with that green paint. It's fine. But I do want some green paint. Just a little bit, OK? Like I said, we can always add more. So we don't need to like glob this on. I don't need this like just dipped in a huge thing of green because we're only doing this little corner right here. Three fingers wide of green. That's it. That's all we're doing. So just right here. And again, it's going to blend into that dark, so it's not going to be like a perfect corner. But we're going to start right here in the corner. And I'm going to go with just that little bit. Look at three fingers of green. That's it. I have a lot of white showing. It's really kind of see-through and translucent, but that's OK, because we're going to have trees there. We're going to have stars there. It'll be fine. So I'm just going to add in a little bit of this green. And the end of this line, like right here, it doesn't have to be a perfect corner line because I want it to blend with the blue, right? I'm going to let it blend and fade anyways, so don't worry about it being perfect. A little bit of green. About three fingers. Straight up green paint, big brush. And then we're going to add in the dark blue. We haven't touched it yet. We're going to put some dark blue in there. I am not going to clean off my brush. I'm going to leave it right as it is. This is how much paint I have in my brush, like this. So it's kind of running out of paint. That's where you should be. If you have a ton of paint, mm, you might want to wipe it off on your napkin or something. But just a little bit of paint. Dark blue. Let's grab that dark blue. Just a little bit. Again, you don't need a ton. And we're going to come diagonal again and another three fingers or so. And I'm going to go right on top of my green, right next to it. When those two colors mix, it's going to make this beautiful dark teal color. So just add that right there. And let's get about three more fingers wide. If your paint is really dry and it's not moving, again, you can use a little bit of water, just a touch. I don't want it dripping down your canvas, just like this. But now that I have these, look at that line. 
that green and that blue. It's so harsh. I don't want to see that line. So take your brush right in between those two colors where the two colors meet and let's just mush those two colors together. And I'm just going back and forth and back and forth. I'm going to head down into my blue and I'm going to work up into my green. I want them to be seamless. I want one more. I want it a little bit wider than that. Now this little section here where these two colors meet is kind of tricky. It's kind of a tricky little area. And we're going to add some purple later on to kind of blend it and mush it. Because that orange and that blue, like they just set on top of each other. They're not really going to blend. But we're going to put some purple in there later and we'll bring it together, okay? But for right now, we're going to let them just be their own thing. So I'm just going right up to that orange section. Again, another three fingers or so. And then we're going to start working in a lighter color. But we haven't mixed it yet. So a little bit of this dark blue. Keep these strokes going diagonal. And again, I just, I just blended right back up into my green again because I can. The green can come back down. So I have about a hand's width worth of canvas left to paint. Clean off your big brush. Clean it off. We're going to mix up this really pretty, pretty color to fill in the rest of this. Okay? Ready? Set? Here we go. I need your mixing plate. I need your big brush and I need it clean. Please grab one scoop of white. And like I told you before, you're just going to scoop up a glob of white just like this. You're going to stick it on your mixing plate just like that. One scoop of white and a little half scoop of green. Half. Not a full one, just a pretend one. And it's going to make this really beautiful, like minty, soft, sea foamy. Oh, it's pretty. Look at that. That's pretty. We're going to fill the rest of this in. I don't want you to get too close to this guy just yet. And again, we're coming this way. We're going to keep it kind of diagonal. And then I can slowly start flattening it out, kind of closing that curve a little bit. We're going to go around. Look at me. I'm going around my clouds. When I get to the clouds, we're going to water our brush down and just kind of feather it in really gentle. So don't worry about getting like right on top of it now. Just go right next to it, close enough. I do want this to mix with this blue, though. So let's make sure if your blue is drying, let's hurry up and start blending that real quick. And I'm just going back and forth and back and forth. If you need to, like my blue is almost already dry. If you have to, you can dip back into the regular blue and add a little bit more to kind of re-wet that and make it more blendable, easier to blend. So go right next to that blue and start working that blend right away, okay? And again, if your, blue, your dark blue was already dry like mine was, dip right back into that dark blue and just add a little bit more and those two colors will blend again and they'll be friends. So I want that to blend. The rest of this can just go on nice and clean and dry, but this I want to be blended and beautiful. And I'm going diagonal still. And then I'm just going to slowly kind of taper out. And now I'll look at me. I'm going mm, almost going vertical, horizontal, vertical, horizontal. Stay with me. Just like this. So it looks like the, you know, it's like whooshing away. It's like the clouds are moving. And I'm just going right up to my orange. I'm not, not going to really touch it all just yet. Because what I want to do I've got just a little bit left over here on my brush. I'm going to get a little water, just a little touch of water. And I'm just going to kind of mix it in to my brush to kind of just get all that paint going again. Not much, though, okay? And gently, look how gentle. I'm barely touching. 
And this paint is now almost kind of see-through. And I can bring it down here a little bit into my orange. And it's not going to look terrible. And look how soft. Look how gentle. And I'm kind of using the edge of my brush just like this. I'm not going straight on. I'm kind of tilting it just a little bit. And you're going to go very gentle. So now my paint looks like this, like it's almost see-through. So as I'm getting close to these little pink clouds, I'm not going on with like super heavy, thick paint. I'm going on with like a watered down version of that paint. And I'm just letting it kind of feather in so soft. Okay. So soft. And I'm even going to go over it just a little bit so I don't have like this weird outline all the way around it. I'm going to go over the pink cloud just a touch. And that works, right? So fill all this in with thick, heavy, heavy paint. We want this nice and heavy and thick. That's cool. But then once we get here, once we get close to like these little bitty pieces and the orange and the pink and... I don't want it to be heavy paint and I don't want it to look like it's outlined, you know. I got a little bit of water on my brush. I worked it into my brush. Just tripped off my plate. And then I'm holding this like a minus sign so it's skinnier and a little bit easier to work with. And this is now going on almost like a stain. There we go. You doing okay with that part? You freaking out? Mm. So we mixed up our little teal color. We used a big scoop of white and a little half a scoop of green. We started right here. I went right next to my blue. Work that in nice and thick paint and just work it back and forth, back and forth, because we want this all to be blended and streaky so it looks like the wind's blowing and taking us over this way. So really just blend like you've been doing all this time. Same thing. You're going to just blend right here with this blue. Keep it going diagonal. Keep it going diagonal, nice and heavy. Go around your pink clouds. Don't touch them yet. Just go right up to them. And then over here, I have flattened out a little bit. I'm not going diagonal anymore. I have flattened out. And I just went all the way around my clouds. But once I'm like, I'm leaving just like an eighth of an inch, like a little hair all the way around those clouds. And then you can go in and just water down your brush just a little bit, like just the tip of your brush. And I'm just kind of getting water on these, the whatever paint's left in my brush. Just water it down a little bit so it's really thin, like a stain. Like I can see through it. It's so thin. That's what I want. With that really thin, you've got just a little like hairline outline around your, s your clouds, like a minus sign, and just very gently go in, barely touching, and just go right in. And kind of fill that area in just a little bit. And I even went over my pink cloud just a touch. That's okay. You can go right over your pink cloud with a little bit of that blue. They kind of blend and they look really pretty together. Just keep blending and working. And I came right up to my orange sky here. And I'm just letting it feather off. My green on my brush is so thin and kind of see-through that I just went over it a little bit and it seems to be working just fine. So you just want to kind of soften that edge just a little bit. When you're done, clean off that brush. Clean off that brush. We got one more little thing to do and then we're going to take a break. One more little thing to do, and then we'll take a break, and you even will have time during the break to kind of catch up if you need to. Here's the original one. Remember, we just went a little sideways, and then we started coming here, and we tapered off a little bit, and we're just tapering this up into these clouds, but we're going to touch up with a little bit of purple on those clouds right now, so we'll be okay. The only thing we're missing is the purple. We need a little bit of purple in the sky. We're going to add a little bit of purple right here, right where our sun's going to be setting. So just a 
few little stripes of it. And if you want, we can add a little bit into those pink clouds and that'll help it mix and blend with that green just a little bit. This is just kind of a quick little easy step. We're not gonna spend too much time on it because it's not really important. So go ahead and clean off your brush. Clean that brush off. And we're going to grab some hot purple, like fluorescent purple. A little bit. We don't need a ton. Just a little bit of purple. Like just on the tip of my brush, I have a little bit. And right above my horizon lines. Here's my horizon line. Here's my water down here, right? Right above it. Right above it over here. I'm going to just add in a few streaks. I'm going to start on the outside and I'm just pull it in and let it kind of taper off into nothing. I'm just going to drag it in. So I'm pushing a little hard right now, and then I'm letting up, letting up, and I'm off. Your fluorescent colors, like a fluorescent purple, they are so translucent and see-through. So you're not going to get this really like dark section. It's just going to be this very soft, kind of see-through, hazy color, and that's what we want. We want it to be just really soft and kind of pretty. But it's just another little pop of color for a little, little warmth in here. So right above, I'm pushing, I'm pushing, and I'm letting up. So it just feathers off. And this is maybe like two fingers wide. If you need to add a little bit of water, you can. I am barely touching right now. I have like four bristles barely touching the canvas, and I'm just feathering that over here because this is all dry. So I just want to kind of dry brush it and just feather it in real soft. And if you need to and you want to, you can add a little bit of purple, so little. Like, don't get more paint. Just whatever's left right here in your cloud if you want. This is optional. You don't have to do this. But I kind of like it because it adds a little bit of, like, some depth and mm, makes the clouds look kind of cool to me. So I didn't grab more paint, though. I didn't like scoop in there. I just used what was left. You can definitely dip in your paint and go right here and put this dark purple in. That's fine. But whatever's left on your brush, with that, you can touch your clouds. Because if you go in there with that paint, it's just it's going to be too much and it's just going to be kind of a mess. So I less is more. I want less paint and just a little bit, just a little bit right here. So you can do each. I did it like just a little on the tops of my clouds. Kind of deepens it up a little bit, gives it a little attitude, you know. This purple, it can expand past the middle of your canvas if you want. My, my brush is like pretty dry right now. There's just kind of remnants. That's good enough. All right, we are going to go to a break. If your painting is super wet, um, it might be a nice idea to run and go find a blow dryer and blow dry your painting a little bit. Make sure it's nice and dry. When we come back, we are going to put our sun in place. Okay. We're going to put some reflections in here. We're going to put our land and then trees. And boom, we've got endless summer. We hope everyone is having fun with their painting tonight. We wanted to take a short break and share a little bit more about ABC. Here's a short video that gives you a glimpse into everything our school is and how special our kids really are. Ready? Go. One. A brighter community is a first start in education so that when they go on to the next level, they'll be more than ready. We are a brighter community, a brighter future for them because a lot of them lives are not so bright. Can we first say hello to our friends? Hello. 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 To our friends. And for our friends, we're going to sing Mr. Sun. Can
hopes and dreams for these kids are that they be all they can be. Many of these kids don't have the stability they need. We become that stability for them. Without question, the COVID-19 pandemic has created tough situations for nonprofits everywhere. Funds are tighter than ever and needs are higher. All funds given to a brighter community go directly to supporting our school and children. Providing quality education to students that might not get it otherwise. Provided family, providing family and parent support to all of our families. And helping to eliminate and reduce food insecurity for our families through in-school meals, brown bag lunches, and any other support they might need during COVID-19. Anything you're able to give will make an impact on these children's lives. A small portion of your paint kit will be donated to ABC, but we'd ask you to consider making an additional donation using our PayPal link located in the description box. Thank you for your continued support for our children.
to go refresh your little snacks and your drinks. So happy you guys are back with me. I know it goes by quick. Hopefully you had a chance maybe to hit a blow dryer if you need it. Um, I finished my painting while you were gone. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> we're gonna keep going together. We are gonna start working on our moon. We're gonna mix up a little color. All right, so be ready for that, just a minute. We're gonna put this moon in place. It is a sun. Thank you, Laurel, thank you. I wanna, moon, sun, they're interchangeable nighttime here okay sun we are gonna put our little sun our bright yellow sun you think that'd be obvious we're gonna put some reflections in and then it is land and tree time all right I want us to grab our medium brush we are not gonna need our big brush maybe for one or two more steps and that's gonna be it um, but from now on here on out we can use our smaller brushes so I'm gonna use my small flat brush this flat brush is going to give me a nice kind of just flat, even paint. Going to give me a nice little section for my moon there. My sun. Ugh. It's hard, you guys, okay? Life is hard. Okay, let's do it. So, are you ready? Here we go. Welcome back, friends. Small, flat brush. I need your mixing plate, please. We are going to be mixing a scoop of white and a scoop of yellow white on my plate yellow on my plate mix it up this will give us that really bright sun we're going to use this for the sun color and we're going to use it also in the water as reflection so because whatever is here in the sky is also reflecting down into the water of course so our sun is right smack dab in the middle of the canvas and it's just that half dome that we're going to do you'll notice it's right on our horizon line, of course, and we're talking about two fingers, two fingers tall. However, your sun can be setting at all different levels, so if you want it to be a little bit taller, you absolutely can. We're going about, let's, that's important too, huh? You know how wide it is. Let's go, it's about four fingers wide. It's 
skinny rat fingers. So if you gentlemen, if you got big old honking Shrek hands, like drop it down a pinky or something, okay? So four little skinny rat fingers wide. Kind of a fun way. If you don't have something, you always could use something too. Like if you have a little cup or something, you can just put your cup or whatever. Look around real quick, a little plastic cup if you want. Uh, just about that size and place it there and you can just trace over it if you want but we can just wing this as well because it's going to be a little hazy because it's setting yeah. okay i'm hearing that some of you only have a small round brush that's fine that'll work too that's perfect you can use your small round brush to outline and then when you go to fill in you're going to kind of use the side of your brush like this you won't be filling in this way. So you'll just fill in your sun a little different than the rest. It's okay. So eyeball it, baby. Find the center of your canvas, if you will, and right on a horizon line there. I want to, like, you can even measure if you want. On either side of my fingers, I put four fingers up, and I'm just going to give myself two little tick marks. That way I know how wide my moon's going to be. I said it was about four fingers, so I did a little tick mark here, a little tick mark there. And I'm just going to connect those dots just like this. We'll make a little dome. About two fingers tall. And if you have the skinny brush, all right, just give yourself that line. Let's outline the whole thing. Let's outline the bottom right on the horizon line. So now I have this dome. I made a flat line on my horizon line. I made my little dome and I'm going to fill it in. Now, your sun will not be perfectly filled in with this one step. We will go back at the very end, and you can add a second coat and make it pretty. Because right now, it's going to be really see-through. But it's important that you just give me a flat, even pink coat all the way across it. I don't need ridges all through there. If you're using a baby brush, a small brush like this, I'd really like it if you would use the side of your brush. So don't go straight on like this. You're going to tilt your brush sideways and you're going to scrub on the side. Just like this. You're going to just scrub right on the side of your brush and use that whole flat side of your bristles there to fill this in. If you, if you go right in here, it's going to be really lumpy and it's not going to work out. I want this paint to go on nice and flat and smooth. And it will be see-through. It will not be very pretty right away. Not yet. I promise at the very end, we'll go back, we'll put another coat on, and it'll be perfect. So one nice flat coat. Do not try to glob the paint on. The more paint you put on, it'll just keep like removing the paint for the most part. You need with acrylic paint, you need to put one thin coat on, let it dry, let it get a little tacky, let it set up a little bit, and then you can apply a second coat and it'll stick, it'll take it. But if you just keep adding on wet paint, wet paint, you're just going to be mushing it around. It's going to be a mess. So one nice flat, even coat, leave it alone, let it dry. And then once it's dry, you can go back, put another coat on, and it'll be smooth, and it'll be perfect. Yes, perfect, I said. That's it. But our sun setting is going to be creating reflections all down the water. And that's really important. That's a really pretty part of this painting. And we're going to add those in. We're going to use that same mix. We're going to use that yellow mix. And we're going to add in in just a second. I want you to get your moon in place. Make sure it looks like a dome and not like a big lemon or a, I don't know, big blob. Mine's a little goofy. Mine looks a little wonky. That's OK. We don't really care what mine looks like. I care more about what yours looks like. OK, so just take a moment. Make sure you get yours just, just right. Mine looks a little lazy. That's my quarantine moon. It's a sun. I can't quit calling it a moon. I'm sorry. I really need some champagne. That's what's happening. I work best with champagne. Don't you? Doesn't everybody? Nice and smooth. Let it dry, let it set up, and then we can add more. We can do it at the very end, or you can do it in just a minute when you have some free time on your own. I want us now 
to take our yellow and white mix that made our sun and we're going to add some reflections into the water. So I'm using my flat brush and I'm going to use it and hold it like a minus sign. So it's kind of horizontal. If you're using your baby skinny brush, that is awesome. And that works just as well. OK, you're going to do the same thing. You're going to get your yellow paint in there and we're going to just be making some random little streaks in the water. Uh, they're not going to be like perfect lines going all the way across. They're going to be, we want to see those little white caps. So as the water is kind of glistening, that's what we're adding in. So I'm going to just be kind of pushing on the canvas and up, pushing and up and pushing and up. So I'm going to be just kind of moving quickly. But right underneath where my moon is, hold it like a minus sign, yellow mix. Look at these lines. Just streaky little lines. We don't have to go down too far. I wouldn't get down into the green section because this moon, this is going to be a drinking game. It's a drinking game. Every time I say moon, you got to take a drink. That's just the end of it. I can't quit. I don't know why. Laurel said just go with it. It's a moon tonight, you guys. So... I don't think it's big enough to really reach down into this green section. I wouldn't mess too much with that, but definitely in this little pink area, I'm just making these really random, gentle little marks. They can be a little wobbly. They don't have to be perfectly straight. It's water after all. So we're just using that mix that we just made with our sun. Yeah, I got it that time. The sun. That same mix, the white and the yellow. And I'm just taking it. Use your little brush if you have it, your little round brush or your flat brush. Either one, they both work perfectly. And we're going to just go back and forth. Hold it like a minus sign so it's kind of skinny. And you're just going to add in these random little stripes. And I'm really focusing it just right here just right in here. So it's really wide at the top. And as I get down a little bit closer into the white section of my water, it just kind of tapers off and just gets a little bit smaller. I know it's very difficult to see because that yellow is not very dynamic and you can't see it very well with that pink, but it's there. I'm starting off a little wide right underneath my moon. And then as I go down, I'm getting a little smaller, like a tornado, like a uh, triangle almost coming down a little bit smaller. But don't be too locked into that shape. I don't want it to be too concise. It's water. I want it to look like it's flowing and moving. Whenever you get a chance, you can go back and add a second coat. If, if your sun is dry, you can go back and add a second coat whenever you want. One more color to put in our water, and then we're going to move on to trees. One more color. White. White is just beautiful because when you're looking out at this endless beach, you're going to see all these little sparkling, glittering white caps all along. That's what we're going to create. That's what we're going to do. I don't think I need, I'll wipe it off. Let's wipe off our brush. How about that? Let's wipe it off. I don't need to clean it because we've already got our, yet. we're using that yellow in there anyways. It's fine. Don't clean it. Just wipe it off on your napkin, just like this. White paint, same thing. Same drill. I'm using my flat brush. If you're using your small brush, they both work beautifully. White paint. I want the white paint to kind of break up that horizon line. So it'll be important for us to take that white paint and put it just at the tippity tip of the horizon line, just so you can kind of see the difference. So right where my sun, see now I made it a drinking game and now I can't say moon. That's what you get. So right along the horizon line, along here I'm just giving myself a little bit of these scratchy scraggly lines again it's gonna be kind of hard to see on the monitor just know that it's happening have faith i'll try to make them a little bit heavier so you can see them a little bit better how about that is that better can you see them a little bit a little bit of white Now the white, you can drag that a little bit into this green kind of blue section because, hello, it's water, right? The white can come out a little bit farther. 
So just want a few little streaks. These like little snakes almost, just kind of rippling along the top, just to give it a little bit of bling, a little bit of sun-kissed look. I love it. Good job, you guys. Keep going. We're going to get this land in place, and then it's tree time, and there's no stopping us. So far, so good. No coconuts? Good. Put those in there. Don't overdo it. Um, don't work it too much and make the whole thing like a big streaky, streaky mess. It's just supposed to be really just kind of soft. Like this little bling, a little bit of glisten through there. You don't want to overdo it. You don't want to mush up your whole water. Just a little bit of that yellow in there. A little bit of white in there and kill it. Done. Oh, actually, I'm going to leave that up for our next step so you can see. Got a little bit of water in there. Okay. When you're done with that, that's pretty much everything. That's the whole background. That's everything. We will not need any more colors except for black and white, okay? White, we have stars. That'll be our final step, stars. If you want them, maybe you don't want them, but there's stars in there. And black, from here on out, black, that's all we need. We're gonna put this land in place. We can't have these palm trees just floating out of nowhere. They have to have somewhere to stand. We've gotta have a little bit of land down here. So we're gonna make this little just lumpy ground. It's just really soft. You'll notice on the edge, it is about two fingers tall on this edge. And it's just kind of lumpy, lumpy. It gets a little smooth and low in the center so we can see all of our water, so we can admire that water. We'll keep it kind of low. And then as we come up over here, it gets a little higher. Two or three fingers on either side, on either edge, two or three fingers. And then it just gently dips down in the middle and it's going to be nice and just well, small right here. Don't see it too much. But we just need somewhere for these trees to live, okay? We're going to use black. And we can use our big brush, or you can use your small brush, too. So your big brush, if you've got a really big brush that you're using, like maybe you're using a one-inch brush, uh, it might be too much. It might be too, too wide. Uh, so maybe you want your medium-sized brush. Either one. I'm going to use this little half-inch flat brush. I think that'll be perfect. We're going to use that. And we're just going to put this land in place. Lumpy, lumpy, nice and low in the center. Lumpy, lumpy up the sides. It's going to be straight up black paint. We don't need to add anything to it. This is just this beautiful silhouette. And it's going to contrast so nicely with all that color that we've just finished putting on. So are you ready? Got your water in place? Let's go. Let's do it. Big brush, medium sized brush, whichever one works best for you. I want some black paint. And again, over here, it was about two fingers. So if you want to go two fingers and just give yourself a little line, now I know I won't go any higher than that. Over here, it was three fingers. I'm going to measure three fingers, give myself a little line. So I won't go any higher than that either. I'm going to just go in one big foul swoop. Watch me first, and then you can go. I don't want you to make like mountains, like teepees and like big old like whoop de doos This is sand. So I want it to be like all just really gentle and flowing, nice and like soft in the center, you know, nice and low so we can see our beautiful beach right here. Okay. I went three fingers up over here. There's my tick mark. See it? And I'm going to go like this. Lumpy, lumpy down to the center. This bottom part is just about a brush width. Just right here, about a wide brush. That's it. Watch me first, and then you go. And then over here, look, I left my bottom kind of flat, and I'm going to lumpy, lumpy up and connect with my dot. That's it. Just let these be gentle and flowing. Let the wine do the painting at this point, please. Nice and gentle and just flow. And then you're going to fill it all in with black paint. All right? 
So we did about two fingers high on this side, about three fingers high on that side. If you've got more space and you're like, nah, girl, I want huge sand dunes. You do you, baby, do it, go ahead. If you want it to be higher than that, there are no rules here, okay? But fill them in. Nice and smooth. This is just the silhouette. And I did a little lumpy, lumpy, smooth in the center, lumpy, lumpy. If you're color wrapping, don't forget, wrap those edges. We got a little outcast in the studio right now. I should have just sang like a piece of it and had you guess. Missed opportunities all around. Shake it, shake, shake it, shake it, shake, shake it. If you know what song that is, you're the big winner of the night. Got our land in place, simple, right? I mean, just lumpy, lumpy, a little low in the center so you don't mess up all the beautiful that we put in here. And that's it. <gasps> and now, ladies and gents, boys and girls, it's palm tree time. Now, this is the part where everything can go horribly wrong for you, okay? So I need you to pay attention. We just spent an hour and a half making this beautiful, all perfect. And then now we're going to go on with this dark, heavy paint ah, and make palm trees. Yeah, it's terrifying. Drink your wine. Okay, take a breath. Let's have a collective like, <sighs> we got this. We got this, friends. Okay, we've got one, two, three, four, five. Simple. But however, I want you to keep in mind always, this is your painting. So if you're like, nope, I want one big old palm tree and that's the end of it. That's the end of it. Maybe you want palm trees and you want the little hammock or something. I don't care, whatever you want to do. Maybe you want the Loch Ness Monster creeping through your, your lake down there, your beach. I love that. Do that. Do all the things, okay? There's no rules. So we're going to put these in. These three, four, six, five trees, simple, simple. We're going to use our small flat brush. Again, if you don't have this one and you only have the skinny little brush, you can use that too. They work just the same. It's fine. You're going to just kind of have to paint your stems, your trunks, a little bit more. That's all. These are just about as wide as this brush. So right in here, it is literally the same size as this brush. Here's a few things I want you to know and just keep in mind, when your palm tree gets to the bottom, it's naturally going to flare out at the bottom. It's got to have a little meat on its bone so it stands up, right? So the tree trunk is going to be a little bit wider, and then it's going to just taper up and be a little bit skinnier. And it doesn't have to be a perfect line either. Palm trees, you know, they've got like knots and nubs going all the way up. They're crooked. They've all got all kinds of shapes. We're going to put these sticks in place first. We're going to drop them all in place. Look at this one. He's kind of cool. He's coming down, and then he just comes out the side. He's doing his own thing right there. He's my favorite. So we're going to put those sticks into place just so you know where your trees are going to go. We're going to start by adding in the spines of the palm fronds, and then we'll fill them in. So we're going to have, like, these big, ugly, like, pinwheel-looking things all over the canvas, and then we'll fill them up. I'm going to show you on a plate. I'm going to show you on the whiteboard. I want you kind of to practice these before you hit your canvas with them. But let's get them in place first and then we'll worry about leaves, okay? Don't go for the leaves just yet because there's kind of a little science to it to make them like magic. So let's get these in place first. Look at this guy. He is about four fingers over, all right? You'll see the big part of him is just about a hand's width. 
right? My whole hand, that's where he spreads out to be. It's going to end right up here in that light blue section. And it's just going to come down and right about to our horizon line, we'll kick it off the canvas, okay? So let's get that one in first. Let's start right there. All right. I want you equipped with your medium little size flat brush, straight up black paint. Straight up black paint. Ready? This isn't the part to be afraid of, really. It's the leaves that you got to worry about. This part, you're cool. You got this. You got this, you guys. Here's what I said. I said about four fingers in. Take your little hand. Right over here, four fingers in. And we're right up here in this blue area. See where I am? It's going to end right here. Because remember I said it was about a hand's width? We're going to end. So I want, you know, where it starts to be right up here in this blue area, a little bit low. Make sure you can get a full hand there. So I'm going to be about right here is where I'm going to be. Everybody's is going to be different, and that's fine. So I'm going to come four fingers in. I'm going to give myself a little dot. That is going to be right where my the spines and the palm fronds come out, okay? This particular one, I'm going to hold this flat and just drag it straight down. Because remember I said it was just about the size of this brush. If you're using your skinny brush, you're going to be fine. You're going to take one skinny line down and you're just going to beef it up a little bit. All right? I'm going to come just about, I'm going to come straight down and I'm going to kick it right off the canvas just below my horizon line. So right here, take a deep breath. You got this, you guys. Right here, I'm going to come down. I'm pushing, I'm pushing, I'm pushing. I'm smashing and I'm curving. Here I go. Watch me. Off the canvas. It's not perfect. I'm going to go over it now and make it a little bit perfect. A little bit thicker down here so you don't see any of that pink. Okay. So let's just get all these sticks in place. We'll put the spines in and then I'm going to show you how to do the palm fronds. I'm going to cut you loose and just let you go for it. Okay. So you can work at your own pace. I just came just below my horizon line and I just pulled it off. And from right there, we're going to say it's about a hand's width, correct? Let's put this one in place just because we can. You'll notice this one is about a spread hand over on the canvas and it's just maybe like two or three fingers up above my horizon line. Now, remember, my horizon line was a little bit taller than I wanted it to be, but that's okay. They're, they're all going to be a little different, like I said. So it's going to be about two fingers up, about a hand's width over, just like that. Hands width over like this. Hands width, and give me a little stick. Just about a hand's width. And give me that little stick down there. And we're going to bring him up, what I say, just a little bit above the horizon line. So take your line where it is and just come straight up. And you're going to have time. So if you're just getting these skinny lines in right now, don't panic. You're going to have plenty of time to go in, thicken up your trunks, make it all pretty, make it all perfect. We're going to go back. We've got plenty of time, I promise you. I just want to put them in place just so you know where they're going to be. Again, that was a hand's width over. Give yourself a little line and just drag it up just right above your horizon line. This particular... It's a little smaller. See that? He's not quite as big. This was like an open hand. Look how big that one is. This one's just a little bit smaller, just like that. So it's just like a little hand. He can be even smaller than that, too, if you want. If you wanted to be down here a little bit smaller, you can do that. All right, we got three. One, two, three. This is by far our biggest. Nice and tall. Look at him go. So maybe we'll start with him. Mm, or we can start with the baby. Let's start with the baby and work our way in. Baby's about two fingers over and ends right at the horizon line. Two fingers over. Give me a little tick mark. That's like a worm. I don't know what happened to mine. And just go straight down. It's going to go right up to the horizon line. Go straight down.
beef up your bottom a little bit. Two fingers in, and he ends just about at the horizon line. Give me a stick. Drop it in. Our next tree is about three to four fingers over. Wherever that ends up for you. Three or four fingers over, and look, it comes all the way up into the blue section of my sky. You're going to drop it straight down. And the next one after that is a hands width. So we've got like four tight closed fingers in, and the next one's going to be a hands width over. All right. Got this, you guys? We're doing it. We're doing it. Okay. What I say? I said four fingers over. I'm going to come right up into this blue section of my sky and go all the way down. And the next one can be, it can even be a little bit farther over if we want, right over here. All right. Let me see. I'm going to start, I'm going to come right over here and just give myself a line going down. I'm trying to make these not crooked, but I'm sure they might be. That's okay. They'll be blowing in the wind. Perfect. Okay. Right up into that little blue section where they meet. One more. And then we can like start making it happen. One more. Little medium sized guy. He's kind of the same height as this one, isn't it? So if you want, I like them all kind of staggered. We can make it a little lower, a little higher, just so they're all a little different. This one's about a hands width over, and it comes up into that purple section. You are about, I don't know, about a hands width away from your moon. Ah, drink. I didn't mean to. You can go about a hands width, or you can go even four fingers over, because if some of it even covers and goes over the moon, God, sun, drink. Um, it looks cool, right? So even if some of it kind of just tapers over and has like those little fronds kind of just, it's cool. You can do that. So let me do one more in here. Um, I'm going to go right about, I want it to be a different height than this one. That's all. So I'm going to make mine a little taller. How about that? I'm going to go right here. There it is. Drop it in. The placement of these is not critical. Some of you are like, girl, I'm only doing one palm tree. I don't know what you're doing. That's okay, too. Now, we're going to put spines on them, and then we're going to fill in those palm fronds. And it's you can go fast. Kind of the faster, the better, because then they're a little bit more random and loose, and they look really good that way, nice and fat. So here's what's going to happen. Each one of these has about one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Ooh. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. One, two, three, four, five, six. It's going to be whatever you can kind of fit on your palm tree. Odd numbers are usually better. Um, let's see. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So I would say between like seven, five or seven palm fronds would be good. If you can get six or eight, we got all kinds going on there. So. Here's what it's going to look like. If you're using your skinny brush, lucky you. Here's a few things I want you to understand about your brushes before we go too far. Now, with both of these brushes, you can get a very nice thin line like this. Same brush, same amount of paint. I can get a nice fat line as well. It just depends on how hard you push. So if you use a lot of pressure, you're going to get a big fat line. If you go really gentle and really light, you're going to get these little sticky, sticky, skinny lines with either brush. So keep that in mind as we're going. The harder you push, the fatter the brush stroke, the more paint is going to go on your canvas. At this point, for the spines, you can use your skinny, skinny baby brush if you have it. I'm going to stay right here with my flat brush because he's my favorite, and I really like what he does for these kind of trees. So I'll leave it up to you, whatever you are most, most comfortable with. If you're like, girl, I am so heavy-handed, I am globbing this paint on, it's a baby brush for you, all right? 
but I really like my skinny brush, my flat one, because I can get a really skinny kind of line with it. So either one, I will leave this section up to you, tiny brush or the medium sized brush, they will both work beautifully. Now, I think I'm gonna show you on the whiteboard because it might be a little bit easier. I'm gonna come at you real quick. Okay. Here's what is gonna happen. We're gonna put this tree on and the spines are gonna look like this. You're literally gonna go in at this center point that's where they all come out of. They're all gonna come from that one point. There's not gonna be like one over here. One. They're gonna all come from that one center point right there. And you're gonna go like this. One, two, three, four, five. Maybe I'll add a six right there. That's what we're gonna do. We're gonna do that for all of them. One, two. Notice how they're kind of curved. We're making like a pinwheel. So we're going to go in with our skinny brush and we're going to add in these pump fronds all coming from this center point like a flower. One, on this side I'm curving a little down this way. Two, three, now I'm going to switch the rotation and they're going to curve this way. Four, five, six, let's do one more, seven. They're going to be kind of big and loose. However big these are is how big your leaves are going to be. So. This one's gonna be about a hand's width. This one's gonna be like a little bit more of a closed hand. So we're gonna put these palm fronds in like this, these spines in, and then we're gonna fill them in. Let's put all of our sticks in first, okay? Let's put all of our spines in, and then I'll show you how to fill them in. Ready? Let's take a drink. Cheers, let's go. This is still not champagne. I'm gonna start right here, work my way over. You're gonna use black paint, you're gonna use your baby brush. If your paint is getting like thick and gross and it's like not working and it's just meh, put some water, grab some water and just water down a little section. Don't try to water down the entire big glob, just a little corner piece. Water a little corner piece down. It's gonna help your paint to just glide a little bit easier. I'm gonna start at the center point, remember? And from the bottom, I'm gonna go here, one. Start from the center. Flick your way out. Start from the center, flick your way out. Start from the center, and I'm going to push, and then I gently like pull my hand away. Three. And I'm going to flip, and I'm going to start curving it to this side now. I'm pushing, and then I'm pulling away from the canvas. So at the points, I got these skinny little points at the end. If some of your palm fronds go off the canvas, that's pretty cool. Gives us a little vi visual interest. And maybe I'll do one right here. I know these look crazy. One, two, three, four, five, six, and seven. These can be kind of messy and they don't have to be like perfect lines. Mine are like kind of fat and they're not connected and they're not ending well. It's fine, we're gonna put a million leaves on it. You won't even see it. But this is just a guide of where they're gonna be. Please don't leave them like this, okay? <laughs> that There is a rule after all, that was it. Don't leave it like that. Notice on this side of the canvas, on this side of the tree, they're curved this way. Notice on this, the right side, they're curved that way. At the top, they split. At the bottom, they're like this, like parentheses. Okay? Continue on. All of them. Start at the bottom, put parentheses here. Look it. He's like this. See him? At the top, he's going to be like this. This side goes this way and this way. I'm doing one, two, three, four, five. I'm doing six. But once we fill them in, there might be spots where you're like, I got a hole right here. I can't you add another one. But wait till we fill them in. Let's just get like, you know, kind of a good, and then we'll fill it in. Look at this one can be big. He's got this whole space up here. And if there's little parts of your sky that you're like, oh, I hate this. Like, I hate that cloud. 
Well, guess what? He's going to be half covered up. Lucky him. Water down your black paint. Just on the edge. Just a little bit of it. Notice here, I went over, I'm overlapping that tree trunk. Cool, no big deal. Okay, it's almost time. It's almost time, because these look stupid. I'm gonna, we gotta fix it. Hurry up, we gotta fix it. Ooh, 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 ooh. All right, I'm coming back to this. Here's what I want you to do. Uh, even if you're still working on your spines, don't panic. Don't freak out. Some of you are sitting there waiting like, can we get on with it now? Yes. Just give me a little eyeball and take a look because this is what's coming at you. This is what you're going to do. And you're going to do the whole thing. Okay? But here's how I want you to start. So as we go, notice. So everybody pay attention for just a minute, even if you're not ready. Notice how the palm fronds, the spine goes like this. This spine goes like this. See how they're curved in different directions? That's going to be important for the direction of your leaves. Whatever direction your spine is going, you feel me? Whatever direction your spine is going, this one's going this way, your leaves will also go that way. So I'm going to start right here. Look at this. I'm going to do it so you can see it. You're going to use black paint. You're going to use the same brush you're using. And you're going to start always at the spine, flicking your way out. You're not going to come here and go in, okay? You're going to take your paint from your spine. This one is going like this. All your leaves will also go that way. Here's one leaf like this from the spine, out, spine, out, spine, out, spine, out. You will not go out spine, out spine. Because wherever you hit first is going to be really heavy with paint, and I want that all to be at the base of that leaf coming out. And they can have those like little jagged edges. If you do it the other way around, it's going to be backwards. Spine out, spine out. And then as you get here, look, you can kind of just taper it off. So they kind of have this shape. They have like this kind of pointed shape like this, all right? That's going to be kind of something to keep in mind. You're going to keep this kind of pointed shape. So they'll kind of just taper down. Now, this one, remember, this spine here is coming out like this. So where are your leaves going to go? Same way. You're going to start in the dark spine. Out, 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 out. Get tinier as you get here. And uh, maybe I'll put some on the other side too. Right here. And I'm curved with the spine this way. From the spine out. And you let it taper off. Let's get this out of the way so you're not confused. Look at this big one. He's coming like this. Where are my leaves going to go? Same way, from the spine out. Notice they're curved the same way as my leaf. They're not curved this way, like this. See how crazy that looks? Don't do that. That's why it's important. I mean, you might, you'll do it one time and you'll be like, okay, I can't, that's wrong. Whichever way this is going, that's the same way your leaves are going to go. Like this. As you get here, look at I'm getting tiny. And on this side, I'm going to do the same thing. Keep it curved with that line, like this. See? Get it? You're going to keep them shaped like this. That's their shape. Okay, are you ready? Are you ready? If you don't have it, practice on the back of your plate. Use your baby brush. I'm going to use my flat brush. He's my favorite. I told you I have favorites. Um, I'm going to start right here so you can see nice and bright. I'm going to start right here. You can let me go first if you want. There's my spine facing like this. I'm going to start right here and come out, 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 out. I'm pushing. And then as I get to the edge, I'm like flicking off. So it's kind of nice when they're kind of thick all around the spine, nice and heavy. And then the ends have that like little tapered off nonsense right here. I'm going to come around this way again. Flick, 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 flick. 
this one is coming down. I am keeping the same curve. I want you to go right along the same curve as the spine. Taper them down into a point. I'm going to go around on this side. Watch me again. If you're like, girl, I don't know what you're doing. You are freaking me out. It's okay. Watch me. Watch me. Right here. I'm going to do this spine right there. See that one? It's curved this way. My leaves are curving that way. I want you to always start in the dark black area of the spine and flick out. I don't want you to come from here and go in. It's not going to give you the same look. Flick out. Flick out. See how they're curved the same way that's important and I'm going to curve again the same way I'm not curving the other way keep them all curved the same way this one is curving that way my leaves are going that way water down your black paint that's going to help that paint just to glide go on a little bit smoother are we freaking out are we doing okay palm trees can be hard you guys they're not easy because they're kind of confusing especially at the end of the painting and after some fish bowls and everything else you got out there they're like eh, it's kind of confusing but if you just follow that spine you'll be perfect okay and i'm just pulling and kind of the faster and more jaggedy you go, the better it looks for some reason. But I'm pulling from the center out, always from the center out. I don't want you to pull from here and go in because look how fat that is. I want the ends of these leaves to be like scratchy, skinny. And I want to see these paintings. Take some photos. Snap your photos. Hashtag Pinos Live. Tag us. I want to see what's happening out there. You guys are doing great. I can feel it. And you'll notice I go really fast because I like these to be really kind of messy. Um, if you go, ah, you don't want to overthink it. You don't want to like, don't hurt yourself. Again, you can kind of let the wine do the painting at this point. Go, go a little loose, a little free with it. Just keep in mind, you're going to start at the, there's my spine. And as you get going, if you're like, oh, I wish that was a little bit longer, just add a few little scratchy hairs down at the bottom, and it's longer. It's so easy. You're like, yeah, lady, that's what you say. It is. It'll be okay. It's the endless beach. Endless summer is way better than endless quarantine, don't you think? I've just about had it. My family, I think they're like kind of cracking. They're kind of losing it. I have a 14-year-old daughter, and she's like crazy anyways, because that's what 14-year-old girls do. So yeah, this quarantine's not looking good on her. Stay with the curve of your spine. Don't get lazy. Don't get sloppy. This is the best part. This is what we've been waiting for the whole time. Do it. Do it right. Look at me. I'm moving on over here. If you're not and you're like, girl, I'm still on number one. It's okay. you got nothing but time. I want to remind you guys, I have not told you yet, I don't think, but this, the link for this video will be available to you tomorrow. You can click on it. You can watch this over. I know you'd love to do that. Um, but you will have access to it for another few more days. So if you need to go back and like redo something or do it again, um, you absolutely can. You can pause. It'll be like a YouTube video. You'll use the same link. You'll click on it. And you can pause and rewind and fast forward and whatever. So if you want to like go over that whiteboard section again or if you want to just paint the whole thing over again, now is really not the time to start repainting your background. Um, I would not recommend that. We, we've moved past that. All right, here I am. 
I'm on this side, my spine's coming this way, my leaves are coming this way. And then I'm gonna just taper it down. Look at long and scratchy. And I'm gonna do the other side too. Maybe not every single one of these um, gets to have both sides. Maybe some of them, you can only see one side and like half of the other side. That's okay. Don't have to have both sides. On most of them, you're gonna have space for that. You're gonna be able to see that. Look at that, I'm gonna let it go right over my sun, watch. I did it. And I called it a sun too, sorry, no drinks for you. Here we go. I want you just to keep working at your own pace. Don't let me freak you out if you look up and you're like, gosh, she's almost done. That's how I roll, baby. You keep doing you. I like these to go on kind of fast and furious so they kind of go a little wild and erratic. And as you go, if you realize, uh, I don't know if you want more branches, you can. If you put like only four and you're like, God, there's a hole right there. I want one more. Throw on one more. How are they looking? They're okay. You guys are so quiet. You must be like tedious painting. Good for you. I love it. No coconuts. Nobody's freaking out. You got this. Once you kind of get the hang of palm trees, they're really kind of fun and easy to do but mastering them just takes a second. Once you got it, that's it, you got it. And look at right here, it's an overlapping mess, it's fine. I still wanna be able to see some of like the purple in the sky coming in between as well, but they have to overlap. They gotta overlap this big trunk, they gotta overlap each other, that's okay. That's what they do in nature. All right, keep working, keep going, you got it. Last one. Last one, here we go. Take your time, don't rush. So the final thing that we're going to do is just dip some stars in. And I'm going to show you how that's going to go down in just a moment. Let me finish my tree, and then I'll show you. My time is just about up, but I want to show you those stars. Beautiful. You guys, that's going to be it. You're going to keep that same rhythm, that same motion. You're just going to keep on going for all your trees. But before I leave you completely, even if you're not done, it's okay. I'm going to show you this last section, this last part. It is the final step, and it is the easiest step ever. It's almost as easy as painting the white on white when we started. We're going to dip in stars. I know you're not there. Don't freak out. It's okay. You don't have to. You just keep working on those palm trees. Just keep going. But this is what's coming and I want you to see it before I go. So we're gonna take the back end. We're not gonna use the bristles. We're gonna use the handle end. When you're ready, when you're done with your trees, peek at me real quick, but when you're done with your trees, you're gonna do this. You're gonna go in if you want stars. This is an optional step, but here's the stars. I'm gonna dip right into white paint with the handle end of my brush, and I'm just gonna dab on with the handle end random little placed stars all in the sky. So simple. You can do that. You do not need me for that step. I'm letting you know. But handle end, white paint. When you're ready, just tip tap those little stars right into place. And that's going to be your final step. Keep going on your trees. I know you're still working on them. 
cool. It's cool. You got time. You got nothing but time. Again, this video will be available to you. You'll be able to watch it tomorrow again if you need to. And we're going to go in, handle under the brush, white paint, and just tap in stars. That's it, you guys. That is your final step. That's everything. You did it. Congratulations. I'm so proud of you guys. So I know you're probably still working on your trees. Keep going. Keep going. Don't let me rush you. You know how to do it. You don't need me anymore. You got this. You know the tricks. You're going to go in. If you need to add another coat to your moon, don't forget that. Oh, that was one more for you. That was one more. Take a drink. Oh, man. To your son. You can add it in. Okay. So if you want to go back afterwards and like touch up your land, touch up your little sun, um, you certainly can. You've got nothing but time from here on out. All right. I'm going to leave you with that. You're going to tip those little stars and be sure and sign your painting as well. That is kind of, you know, how are you going to sell it for thousands if you don't have it signed, you guys? Let's do it. So thank you so much. I appreciate you. Keep on painting if you're not done. Keep on doing your thing. Keep the party going. Thank you so much for allowing me to come into your home and paint with you. I appreciate you more than you know. Please post your pictures. We want to see them. We love them. We're back there. They're back there. Laurel and Kara are back there looking right now, searching for your photos, and there ain't nothing there. I mean, it's a couple, but we want to see them. There's a couple. We want to see more. Take your pictures, post them, hashtag Pinos Live. We want to see them. We love you guys. If you get a chance to go online to our website, you can always join our Perks program. We have a cool little gang. Uh, it's called Pinos Perks. If you want to be a part of it, you sign in with your email account. It is linked to that. So any monies that you spent, you will earn these little virtual corks. The more corks you earn, you earn free classes. Yes, free. So be sure that uh, you log on and become one of our, you know, one of our people, one of our club. So thank you guys so much. I appreciate you. Thank you for staying home and keeping your community safe. You are amazing people and we love you dearly. I am Jess and it's time for champagne. Thank you. Goodbye. And that's a wrap. Thank you to each of you for joining us tonight and we hope you had a great time and have a masterpiece to remember it by. Don't forget to check out the silent auction. There's many great items to bid on. The auction will stay open through November and winners will be, nom will be announced the 1st of December. Remember, all proceeds go to a brighter community. Thank you again and have a great evening.